a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. John McCain John Sidney McCain III was an American statesman and military officer who served as a United States Senator from Arizona from January 1987 until his death. He previously served two terms in the United States House of Representatives and was the Republican nominee for President of the United States in the 2008 election, which he lost to Barack Obama. McCain graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 1958 and was commissioned into the United States Navy. He became a naval aviator and flew ground attack aircraft from aircraft carriers. During the Vietnam War, he was almost killed in the 1967 USS Forest Hill Fire. While on a bombing mission during Operation Rolling Thunder over Hanoi in October 1967, he was shot down, seriously injured, and captured by the North Vietnamese. He was a prisoner of war until 1973. He experienced episodes of torture and refused an out-of-sequence early release. The wounds that he sustained during the war left him with lifelong physical disabilities. He retired from the Navy as a captain in 1981 and moved to Arizona, where he entered politics. In 1982, he was elected to the United States House of Representatives, where he served two terms. He entered the U.S. Senate in 1987 and easily won re-election five times, the final time in 2016. While generally adhering to conservative principles, McCain also had a media reputation as a maverick for his willingness to disagree with his party on certain issues. After being investigated and largely exonerated in a political influence scandal of the 1980s as one of the Keating Five, he made campaign finance reform one of his signature concerns, which eventually resulted in passage of the McCain-Feingold Act in 2002. He was also known for his work in the 1990s to restore diplomatic relations with Vietnam, and for his belief that the Iraq War should have been fought to a successful conclusion. He chaired the Senate Commerce Committee and opposed pork barrel spending. He belonged to the bipartisan Gang of 14, which played a key role in alleviating a crisis over judicial nominations. McCain entered the race for the Republican nomination for president in 2000, but lost a heated primary season contest to Governor George W. Bush of Texas. He secured the nomination in 2008 after making a comeback from early reversals, but lost the general election. He subsequently adopted more orthodox conservative stances and attitudes, and largely opposed actions of the Obama administration, especially with regard to foreign policy matters. By 2013, he had become a key figure in the Senate for negotiating deals on certain issues in an otherwise partisan environment. In 2015, he became chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee. He refused to support then-Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump in 2016. After a diagnosis of brain cancer in 2017, he reduced his role in the Senate to focus on treatment. When McCain died in 2018, he lay in state in the Capitol Rotunda, and his funeral was televised from Washington National Cathedral. Early Life and Education John Sidney McCain III was born on August 29, 1936, at Coco Solo Naval Air Station in the Panama Canal Zone to Naval Officer John S. McCain Jr. and Roberta McCain. He had an older sister Sandy and a younger brother Joe. At that time, the Panama Canal was under U.S. control. McCain's family tree includes Scots-Irish and English ancestors. His father and his paternal grandfather, John S. McCain Sr. were also Naval Academy graduates, and both became four-star United States Navy admirals. The McCain family followed his father to various naval postings in the United States and the Pacific. Altogether, he attended about 20 schools. In 1951, the family settled in Northern Virginia, and McCain attended Episcopal High School, a private preparatory boarding school in Alexandria. He excelled at wrestling and graduated in 1954. He referred to himself as an Episcopalian as recently as June 2007 after which date he said he came to identify as a Baptist. Following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather, McCain entered the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. He was a friend and informal leader there for many of his classmates, and sometimes stood up for targets of bullying. He also became a lightweight boxer. McCain 
did well in academic subjects that interested him, such as literature and history, but studied only enough to pass subjects that gave him difficulty, such as mathematics. He came into conflict with higher-ranking personnel and did not always obey the rules, which contributed to a low-class rank. Despite a high IQ, McCain graduated in 1958. Naval training, first marriage, and Vietnam War assignment. McCain began his early military career when he was commissioned as an ensign and started two and a half years of training at Pensacola to become a naval aviator. While there, he earned a reputation as a man who partied. He completed flight school in 1960 and became a naval pilot of ground attack aircraft. He was assigned to A-1 Sky Raider squadrons aboard the aircraft carriers and in the Caribbean and Mediterranean seas. McCain began as a subpar flyer who was at times careless and reckless. During the early to mid-1960s, two of his flight missions crashed and a third mission collided with power lines, but he received no major injuries. His aviation skills improved over time, and he was seen as a good pilot, albeit one who tended to push the envelope in his flying. At age 28 on July 3, 1965, McCain married Carol Shep, who was a model from Philadelphia. McCain adopted her two young children Douglas and Andrew. He and Carol then had a daughter named Sydney. McCain requested a combat assignment and was assigned to the aircraft carrier flying A-4 Skyhawks. His combat duty began when he was 30 years old in mid-1967 when Forrestal was assigned to a bombing campaign, Operation Rolling Thunder, during the Vietnam War. Stationed in the Gulf of Tonkin, McCain and his fellow pilots became frustrated by micromanagement from Washington, and he later wrote, In all candor, we thought our civilian commanders were complete idiots who didn't have the least notion of what it took to win the war. On July 29, 1967, McCain was a lieutenant commander when he was near the center of the USS Forrestal fire. He escaped from his burning jet and was trying to help another pilot escape when a bomb exploded. McCain was struck in the legs and chest by fragments. The ensuing fire killed 134 sailors and took 24 hours to control. With the forest still out of commission, McCain volunteered for assignment with the another aircraft carrier employed in Operation Rolling Thunder. There he was awarded the Navy Commendation Medal and the Bronze Star Medal for missions flown over North Vietnam. Prisoner of War McCain's capture and subsequent imprisonment occurred on October 26, 1967. He was flying his 23rd bombing mission over North Vietnam when his A-4E Skyhawk was shot down by a missile over Hanoi. McCain fractured both arms and a leg when he ejected from the aircraft, and nearly drowned after he parachuted into Truk Bark Lake. Some North Vietnamese pulled him ashore then others crushed his shoulder with a rifle butt and bayoneted him. McCain was then transported to Hanoi Main Ho, a low prison, nicknamed the Hanoi Hilton. Although McCain was seriously wounded and injured, his captors refused to treat him. They beat and interrogated him to get information, and he was given medical care only when the North Vietnamese discovered that his father was an admiral. His status as a prisoner of war made the front pages of major American newspapers. McCain spent six weeks in the hospital, where he received marginal care. He had lost 50 pounds, was in a chest cast, and his grey hair had turned white. McCain was sent to a different camp on the outskirts of Hanoi. In December 1967, McCain was placed in a cell with two other Americans who did not expect him to live more than a week. In March 1968, McCain was placed into solitary confinement, where he remained for two years. In mid-1968, his father John S. McCain Jr. was named commander of all U.S. forces in the Vietnam theater, and the North Vietnamese offered McCain early release, because they wanted to appear merciful for propaganda purposes and also to show other powers that elite prisoners were willing to be treated preferentially. McCain refused repatriation unless every man taken in before him was also released. Such early release was prohibited by the POW's interpretation of the Military Code of Conduct which states in Article 3, I will accept neither parole nor special favors from the enemy, to prevent the enemy from using prisoners for propaganda. Officers were to agree to be released in the order in which they were captured. Beginning in August 1968, McCain was subjected to a program of severe torture. He was bound and beaten every two hours. 
This punishment occurred at the same time that he was suffering from heat and dysentery. Further injuries brought McCain to the point of suicide, but his preparations were interrupted by guards. Eventually, McCain made an anti-US propaganda confession. He had always felt that his statement was dishonorable, but as he later wrote, I had learned what we all learned over there, every man has his breaking point. I had reached mine. Many US POWs were tortured and maltreated in order to extract confessions and propaganda statements. Virtually all of them eventually yielded something to their captors. McCain received two to three beatings weekly, because of his continued refusal to sign additional statements. McCain refused to meet various anti-war groups seeking peace in Hanoi, wanting to give neither them nor the North Vietnamese a propaganda victory. From late 1969, treatment of McCain and many of the other POWs became more tolerable, while McCain continued to resist the camp authorities. McCain and other prisoners cheered the US Christmas bombing campaign of December 1972, viewing it as a forceful measure to push North Vietnam to terms. McCain was a prisoner of war in North Vietnam for five and a half years until his release on March 14, 1973. His wartime injuries left him permanently incapable of raising his arms above his head. After the war, McCain returned to the site with his wife Cindy and family on a few occasions to try to come to terms with what happened to him there during his capture. Commanding Officer, Liaison to Senate in Second Marriage McCain was reunited with his family when he returned to the United States. His wife Carol had also been crippled by an automobile accident in December 1969. As a returned POW, he became a celebrity of sorts. McCain underwent treatment for his injuries that included months of physical therapy. He attended the National War College at Fort McNair in Washington, D.C. during 1973-1974. He was rehabilitated by late 1974, and his flight status was reinstated. In 1976, he became commanding officer of a training squadron that was stationed in Florida. He improved the unit's flight readiness and safety records and won the squadron its first ever meritorious unit commendation. During this period in Florida, he had extramarital affairs and his marriage began to falter, about which he later stated, the blame was entirely mine. McCain served as the Navy's liaison to the US Senate beginning in 1977. In retrospect, he said that this represented his real entry into the world of politics and the beginning of my second career as a public servant. His key behind-the-scenes role gained congressional financing for a new supercarrier against the wishes of the Carter administration. In April 1979, McCain met Cindy Lou Hensley, a teacher from Phoenix, Arizona, whose father had founded a large beer distributorship. They began dating, and he urged his wife Carol to grant him a divorce, which she did in February 1980. The uncontested divorce took effect in April 1980. The settlement included two houses, and financial support for her ongoing medical treatments due to her 1969 car accident. They remained on good terms. McCain and Hensley were married on May 17, 1980, with Senators William Cohen and Gary Hart attending as groomsmen. McCain's children did not attend, and several years passed before they reconciled. John and Cindy McCain entered into a prenuptial agreement that kept most of her family's assets under her name. They kept their finances apart and filed separate income tax returns. McCain decided to leave the Navy. It was doubtful whether he would ever be promoted to the rank of full admiral, as he had poor annual physicals and had not been given a major sea command. His chances of being promoted to rear admiral were better. But he declined that prospect as he had already made plans to run for Congress and said he could, do more good there. McCain retired from the Navy on April 1, 1981, as a captain. He was designated as disabled and awarded a disability pension. Upon leaving the military, he moved to Arizona. His numerous military decorations and awards include the Silver Star, two Legion of Merits, Distinguished Flying Cross, three Bronze Star Medals, two Purple Hearts, two Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medals, and the Prisoner of War Medal. U.S. Representative McCain set his sights on becoming a representative, because he was interested in current events, 
was ready for a new challenge, and had developed political ambitions during his time as Senate liaison. Living in Phoenix, he went to work for Hensley & Company his new father-in-law Jim Hensley's large Anheuser-Busch beer distributorship. As vice president of public relations at the distributorship, he gained political support among the local business community, meeting powerful figures such as banker Charles Keating Jr. real estate developer Fife Symington III and newspaper publisher Darrow, Duke, Tully. In 1982, McCain ran as a Republican for an open seat in Arizona's 1st Congressional District, which was being vacated by 30-year incumbent Republican John Jacob Rhodes. A newcomer to the state, McCain was hit with charges of being a carpetbagger. McCain responded to a voter making that charge with what a Phoenix Gazette columnist later described as the most devastating response to a potentially troublesome political issue I've ever heard. McCain won a highly contested primary election with the assistance of local political endorsements, his Washington connections, and money that his wife lent to his campaign. He then easily won the general election in the heavily Republican district. In 1983, McCain was elected to lead the incoming group of Republican representatives and was assigned to the House Committee on Interior Affairs. Also that year, he opposed creation of a federal Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but admitted in 2008, I was wrong and eventually realized that, in time to give full support, in 1990, for a state holiday in Arizona. At this point, McCain's politics were mainly in line with those of President Ronald Reagan. This included support for economics, and he was active on Indian affairs bills. He supported most aspects of the foreign policy of the Reagan administration, including its hardline stance against the Soviet Union and policy towards Central American conflicts, such as backing the Contras in Nicaragua. McCain opposed keeping U.S. Marines deployed in Lebanon, citing unattainable objectives, and subsequently criticized President Reagan for pulling out the troops too late. In the interim, the 1983 Beirut barracks bombing killed hundreds. McCain won re-election to the House easily in 1984, and gained a spot on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. In 1985, he made his first return trip to Vietnam, and also traveled to Chile where he met with its military junta ruler, General Augusto Pinochet. Growing Family In 1984, McCain and Cindy had their first child together daughter Megan, followed two years later by son John Sidney IV, and in 1988 by son James. In 1991, Cindy McCain brought an abandoned three-month-old girl needing medical treatment to the U.S. from a Bangladeshi orphanage run by Mother Teresa. The McCains decided to adopt her and named her Bridget. First two terms in U.S. Senate McCain's Senate career began in January 1987 after he defeated his Democratic opponent, former state legislator Richard Kimball, by 20 percentage points in the 1986 election. McCain succeeded longtime American conservative icon and Arizona fixture Barry Goldwater upon the latter's retirement as U.S. Senator from Arizona. Senator McCain became a member of the Armed Services Committee, with which he had formerly done his Navy liaison work. He also joined the Commerce Committee and the Indian Affairs Committee. He continued to support the Native American agenda, as first a House member, and then a senator, and as a lifelong gambler with close ties to the gambling industry. McCain was one of the main authors of the 1988 Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, which codified rules regarding Native American gambling enterprises. McCain was also a strong supporter of the Graham-Rudman legislation that enforced automatic spending cuts in the case of budget deficits. McCain soon gained national visibility. He delivered a well-received speech at the 1988 Republican National Convention, was mentioned by the press as a short-list vice presidential running mate for Republican nominee George H. W. Bush, and was named chairman of Veterans for Bush. McCain became embroiled in a scandal during the 1980s, as one of five United States senators comprising the so-called Keating Five. Between 1982 and 1987, McCain had received $112,000 in lawful political contributions from Charles Keating Jr. and his associates at Lincoln Savings and Loan Association, along with trips on Keating's jets that McCain belatedly repaid, in 1989. In 1987, McCain was one of the five senators whom Keating contacted in order to prevent the government's seizure of Lincoln, 
and McCain met twice with federal regulators to discuss the government's investigation of Lincoln. In 1999, McCain said, the appearance of it was wrong. It's a wrong appearance when a group of senators appear in a meeting with a group of regulators, because it conveys the impression of undue and improper influence, and it was the wrong thing to do. In the end, McCain was cleared by the Senate Ethics Committee of acting improperly or violating any law or Senate rule, but was mildly rebuked for exercising poor judgment. In his 1992 re-election bid, the Keating Five affair was not a major issue, and he won handily, gaining 56% of the vote to defeat Democratic community and civil rights activist Claire Sargent and independent former governor, Evan Meekham. McCain developed a reputation for independence during the 1990s. He took pride in challenging party leadership and establishment forces, becoming difficult to categorize politically. As a member of the 1991-1993 Senate Select Committee on Power MIA Affairs, chaired by fellow Vietnam War veteran and Democrat, John Kerry, McCain investigated the Vietnam War Power MIA issue, to determine the fate of U.S. service personnel listed as missing in action during the Vietnam War. The committee's unanimous report stated there was no compelling evidence that proves that any American remains alive in captivity in Southeast Asia. Helped by McCain's efforts, in 1995 the U.S. normalized diplomatic relations with Vietnam. McCain was vilified by some power MIA activists who, despite the committee's unanimous report, believed large numbers of Americans were still held against their will in Southeast Asia. From January 1993 until his death, McCain was chairman of the International Republican Institute, an organization partly funded by the U.S. government that supports the emergence of political democracy worldwide. In 1993 and 1994, McCain voted to confirm President Clinton's nominees Stephen Breyer, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg whom he considered to be qualified for the U.S. Supreme Court. He later explained that, under our Constitution, it is the President's call to make. McCain had also voted to confirm nominees of Presidents Ronald Reagan and George H. W. Bush, including Robert Bork and Clarence Thomas. McCain attacked what he saw as the corrupting influence of large political contributions, from corporations, labor unions, other organizations, and wealthy individuals, and he made this his signature issue. Starting in 1994, he worked with Democratic Wisconsin Senator Russ Feingold on campaign finance reform. There McCain-Feingold bill attempted to put limits on soft money. The efforts of McCain and Feingold were opposed by some of the moneyed interests targeted by incumbents in both parties by those who felt spending limits impinged on free political speech and might be unconstitutional as well, and by those who wanted to counterbalance the power of what they saw as media bias. Despite sympathetic coverage in the media, initial versions of the McCain-Feingold Act were filibustered and never came to a vote. The term, Maverick Republican, became a label frequently applied to McCain, and he also used it himself. In 1993, McCain opposed military operations in Somalia. Another target of his was pork barrel spending by Congress, and he actively supported the Line Item Veto Act of 1996, which gave the president power to veto individual spending items, but was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in 1998. In the 1996 presidential election, McCain was again on the short list of possible vice presidential picks, this time for Republican nominee Bob Dole. The following year, Time magazine named McCain as one of the 25 most influential people in America. In 1997, McCain became chairman of the powerful Senate Commerce Committee. He was criticized for accepting funds from corporations and businesses under the committee's purview, but in response said the small contributions he received were not part of the big money nature of the campaign finance problem. McCain took on the tobacco industry in 1998, proposing legislation that would increase cigarette taxes in order to fund anti-smoking campaigns, discourage teenage smokers, increase money for health research studies, and help states pay for smoking-related health care costs. Supported by the Clinton administration, but opposed by the industry and most Republicans, the bill failed to gain cloture. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like?